EQ is as much about reduction as it is about addition. And I think um, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your bass. How do you make a real bass stand well in the mix from Mark Bro? Yeah, bass, getting bass to punch through your mix is quite challenging. And it's, it's probably, like I know this is not a real bass that we have in here, uh, but a lot of your bass comes down to your EQing. And funnily enough, it's not necessarily the EQing you do on your bass. I mean, this is important. If you want more bass, you can give it more bass. You can actually bring it up. So if we, if we take a listen to this bass, you can obviously make it a bit more boosty want more of that clicky bass you can give it a boost around the well, around the 200 here and it gets more so that's one thing the other side of bass though is what are your other instruments doing so the reason that bass doesn't stand out when you're using a real bass guitar for a lot of folks is that their other instruments they're not rolling off the bass there in fact i did a video this week about the uh, high pass filter which is actually a really handy thing to use so if you've got a bunch of instruments and you're getting that muddy sound in your low or your mids you can actually use some uh, high pass filtering here so if we come in here and we go audio unit extensions right down the bottom here you got all these free filters and say we have this hi-hat here bad example hi-hats really top ending but if we grab the high pass filter you can hear there that if we're if we're fine we've got too much bass in an instrument we can actually cut everything below a frequency and what that can do, especially if you've got guitars and vocals and other things, quite often some of that lower rumble and sub noise that you're getting in your tracks is not actually needed. So if you use a high pass filter or you can just use the EQ and you actually reduce it, EQ is as much about reduction as it is about addition. And I think um, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your bass. The other thing you may want to do, and Gary Hubbs uses this and others, is a bit of distortion. Even if it's just a regular bass, you don't have to go nuts, but just use the distortion plugin to add a tiny little bit of distortion. So for instance, let's just grab this bass. It's, uh, it works on electric basses as well. So if we came in here and we went to our distortion or maybe overdrive even just to be a little bit more subtle, don't have 11 dBs of drive there, but maybe bring the tone down a little bit on this, bring it around to maybe like 800 hertz, and then just take a listen when I bring up the drive here. Can you feel how it just it just sort of hits you a little bit harder? It's almost what you feel as opposed to what you hear when you add a little bit of drive. So again, if your bass is a bit too clean, not cutting through your mix, a little bit of distortion or overdrive on the bass can make the world of difference. 